So episode three, very simple. The corporate stooges, the suits up top of Turner has concocted an idea, an idea to take away, strip away the boy genius, quote unquote, from WWF at the time, WWE now, of course. And that boy genius was to be Vince Russo, the new head of creative. So they bring in Vince Russo, thinking that everything would change after they got rid of Eric Bischoff. Boy, oh boy, were they wrong. Things got only weirder. Now, I will say this. During this time, this is probably hitting around 99, 2000-ish. Um, this is the dark... It, ages and dark days for me when it came to wcw i was hardly watching around this time i i just it was just crap at that time i think i was outside i was doing some foul shit outside i, I you know i would pay attention as far as the internet was concerned i always stayed in tune of what was happening in wcw or wwf at the time but I knew, man, once Vince Russo came in and they started doing all these goofy ass matches and had all these goofy ass character concepts and storylines, it was just not the type of product that I wanted to watch anymore. So at that point, you knew it was it, it just it was a death knell. Uh, then, um, of course, you know, Bret Hart is gone at this time because of the whole Goldberg situation. So. Yeah, it was no real point for me to watch. My guy's not wrestling anymore, so what the hell am I going to watch this crap for? So, that being said, they they detailed a lot of things. The power struggle continued. Eric Bischoff was called back in to help out matters with Vince Russo to try to oversee him, to try to, I don't know, steer him in a certain direction while also maintaining to give him the control that they promised him. I mean, it was just a whole shit show. It was a disaster over there at Turner, which is really funny because Turner still ran like a disaster underneath Discovery. But that's a whole nother uh, topic. As far as Vince Russo is concerned, if you really strip away all the lunacy that went on in his tenure, the only really good things that he did probably was the first thing I will say this. And I put I wrote this down. The first good thing. I can take away from his whole tenure was the idea him and Eric had with the new blood versus the old blood. Now it made perfect sense because you had the guys from the past, the top guys, the millionaire guys, the guys who were kind of running things for the past few years. And, you know, Dallas page and Hogan and outsiders and all those guys, you know, the big earners. And you had the new up and coming guys coming up, Jared and all these other guys that was picked by, um, you know, and Booker T was in there too, picked by Vince Russo. I mean, eventually, I mean, those were Russo's guys. Those are the, these are the guys Vince wants to push up. So, you know, you had a good storyline that kind of had some realism to it and you could have really made some hay with that. But again, when you have, too many things operating at once. You have too many hands in a cookie jar. You got Hulk Hogan, who's got um, complete curb launch when it comes to creative control. You got Vince Russo, who's supposed to be in charge of creative control. And then now you got Eric Bischoff back, who's supposed to be an over, quote unquote, overseer to Vince Russo and all of this, while also being completely and utterly blindly loyal to Hulk Hogan at the same time. And you still have Turner meddling around. So it is this a recipe for disaster? It was never going to work no matter who was running the company. But also the other really, really good thing that Vince Russo did in his time running the whole company was he was the only guy that really put Booker T over. Booker T has been awesome his entire career. He's been one of my favorite wrestlers for his entire career as as long as i've tracked uh, harlem heat i loved harlem heat harlem heat to this day don't get the kind of credit that they deserve they are one of the greatest tag teams ever are none him and stevie ray yes they were legit 
you had the powerhouse and Stevie Ray, and then you had Booker T with all the high flying stuff. And he gave you some power as well. They was the perfect combination. You know what I'm saying? And and to this day, they still don't get the credit that they deserve. I wonder why. But Booker T never thought that he would get put over. And everybody in the company knew how good he was. But they knew the politics. They know the game. You know how it, how it, how it goes, especially when Hulk Hogan's at the top and he's got creative control. You think Booker T was ever going to get a shot? You think Booker T was ever going to elevate to be in the top? superstar top player that he ended up becoming no of course not not with hogan at the top that doesn't work for me brother but uh good thing that vince russo had common sense to see yo hogan stepped aside even the promo that vince russo did even though i think it was just shoot he tried to act like it wasn't a shoot in the uh documentary in episode three it's like vince come on it was a shoot it was a shoot and, and, you know, we not really mad at you for it. Hogan was a piece of shit and he did deserve to step aside and, or be removed. All of that was true. And then you had the right idea of, of, of putting a guy on like Booker T, which he did give the devil his due. He put Booker T on. He made Booker T a main event star that he is today. If it's not for Vince Russo, maybe he never gets a world title uh ever and then it, maybe that that definitely affects booger t's hall of fame career yeah he goes in as a tag team um with, with um stevie ray but he is nowhere near the legend that he is now as a singles competitor without vince russo that's crazy as crazy as that sounds it's the truth so yeah that was really much of everything that vince did that was right vince russo i'm talking about so other than that, you had just disaster after disaster. I think Eric Bischoff was let go again. And then you had Russo went home for a little while. Then they send him back. It was just a disaster. It was a nightmare. They had all these terrible gimmicks. Uh, they, they were trying to mimic Jerry Springer, for God's sakes. Then they tried to incorporate horrible a horrible marketing idea with that terrible wrestling movie with David Arquette. And try to incorporate it into real, like a real storyline within the, with the, first of all, it's a good idea to try to incorporate and weave in some type of culture into your storylines when it comes to your wrestling matches. It makes to a perfect sense in the world. But to choose that horrible movie that flopped in the box office as your main storyline and then eventually put the championship on the main character. Is just supreme idiot idiocy to the highest level. And for Vince Russo to still think that that was a great idea is just a, a part of the reason why he's pretty where he is today. Miserable because of all of his terrible decisions. He was drunk too. Everybody was drunk with power back then. Everyone. And he's no different. You made terrible decisions, dog. You got to live with him. You got to live with him. So that was episode three in a nutshell. Uh, they start to build up the takeover as far as Vince coming in and buying up everything. You know, they did talk about Eddie Guerrero leaving the, the radicals, Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, um, Chris Benoit, and um, who am I missing? Oh, Perry Saturn. And when those guys left, that was it. That was when the whole everything just fell apart because those were your main workers. Those are your those are your workers. Those are your mid card guys. They carried the mid card in WCW. And then you take them away. You take all that talent away. And then a week later or a couple of weeks later, you they get Chris Jericho as well. Those five guys. That's what put the death now in WCW when they lost all five of those guys. In the time span that they lost them in free agency, they were cooked. It was a quicker death. They were already bleeding out, but it was a much quicker death once they lost all five of those guys. But yeah, man, they talked about all that. And then now they started to lead on to the other crazy stuff as far as the more, even more crazy bad ideas. And then, you know, when you got Scott Steiner involved 
in in math, that's when things get really entertaining. So, episode four, see you then.